So, so b before I get to more into, into the topic itself, uh, le let me acknowledge some of the, the people which have uh, contributed to, to the work. Uh, we're uh, about, I'm going to show the, the, the results. So there's people from my own group and university in Tampere, but there's also people from, from John Dudley's group in, in Besançon and from, from Daniel's uh, and also Daniel Brunner. Um, Sergei has also uh, uh, been contributing uh, with his colleagues from uh, Novosibirsk State University as well. And also Benjamin is, is uh, at some, some contribution in some of the results. So thanks, thanks to all of you. And uh, here is the, the outline of, of my talk. So I'm going to start by um, giving you a short uh, uh, introduction about ultrafast dynamics and instabilities in fiber optics. And, and of course, this talk is, is really about that. So I think it's, it's good to have a sort of an idea of, of what I'm talking about here. And maybe not all of you are familiar with with uh, ultra-fast or short pulse uh, uh, propagation dynamics in, in optical fibers. Um, after that, oops, I don't know why this is moving automatically, but uh, after that, uh, I'll win, I will move to, to describe uh, to you real-time measurement techniques, which are often needed to understand and characterize ultra-fast dynamics. Uh, and then I will show you how one can apply machine learning techniques uh, uh, combined uh, uh, with, with some real-time measurement techniques uh, to obtain insight into ultra-fast instabilities. Uh, and in particular, uh, the instabilities that I will, I will uh, highlight during this talk are the, the uh, fundamental modulation instability uh, and also the emergence, the, 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 the emergence of uh, rogue waves in noisy supergonal generation process. And the, the last part of the talk will be dedicated uh, to the use of a special type of machine learning approach, which allows us to go even beyond uh, simple analysis of instability and dynamics, uh, allowing to predict a, a full uh, complex evolution. Uh, but first things first, um, there has been, uh, 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 recently in, in, in the past years, there has been a really strong interest uh, to exploit machine learning in physical sciences, and not only in photonics, actually, but, but in many other branch of physics. And uh, for those of you who are interested, I really recommend this, this uh, very nice review paper here, uh, uh, which has appeared uh, uh, two years back, and, and, and which gives you a very comprehensive overview of, of how machine learning uh, can be applied to physical science and, and, and what kind of techniques are appropriate for, for, for what kind of application. So if you're interested, please, please have a look. Um, <coughs> and of course, uh, uh, it's, it's perhaps then not surprising to see that machine learning is, is increasingly present in photonics and in particular in, in uh, ultrafast photonics applications. Um, as you have uh, seen uh, already in some of the talks uh, during, the, during the school since, since Monday, uh, there's a lot of uh, potential uh, application for machine learning in, in ultrafast photonics. And um, if you want to go a little bit further, uh, we have co-authors together with, with, with uh, Daniel and, and, and uh, Sergey in, in, in the uh, last month, Nature Photonics a special issue on machine learning, a, a review article uh, about machine learning and its application to, to ultrafast photonics. Uh, and, and in particular, uh, I think what we try to do in this, in this uh, review article is really to, to, to highlight the, the, the great potential that machine learning has to, to accelerate technology uh, uh, ultra-fast technology development, including, for example, the generation and characterization of flight pulses, uh, the study of flight matter interactions on, on ultra-short time scales, uh, or high-speed optical um, measurements. Uh, so, so this article, uh, uh, of course, is, is, is a, give an, an overview of the potential of machine learning for ultra-fast application, but it also contains some tutorial elements uh, on, the on the different types of machine learning algorithm, uh, where they can be applied, and, and also some uh, general guideline in choosing the uh, algorithm 
a machine learning algorithm parameter. So it can be a very nice sort of entry level uh, article for, for, for those of you who are really interested in applying machine learning techniques to, to ultra fast photonics. And, and the, the, the highlights uh, uh, from this review article include uh, design and, and operation of, of uh, uh, or, or um, pulse lasers, and uh, as well as the control of, of ultrafast nonlinear dynamics. This is, of course, an area where machine learning is, can be naturally applied uh, because these type of systems are typically uh, very difficult to optimize, control, or characterize since um, they include or, or, or they often uh, uh, require the balance between multiple control parameters or, or degrees of freedom. And, and this is really an area or a problem that machine learning is I ideally suited for uh, uh, to solve. So, so uh, in that sense, it's perhaps not surprising that machine learning is, is finding an increasing number of application in, in, uh, in the self-tuning and stabilization of fiber laser or, or even for the, the control of uh, nonlinear propagation uh, as as uh, Benjamin has, has uh, uh, discussed uh, earlier this week. Um, it can also be uh, uh, applied to, to, to control and characterization uh, 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 from a given set of often noisy measurements, for example, in, for, for uh, pulse compression or pulse characterizations. So all these different applications are summarized in, in, in the paper, which I mentioned, and I really encourage you to go and read it if, if, if this is an area you'd like to get more, more familiar with. Uh, that being said, let's move on to the uh, topic of interest for now, which is the, the, the application of machine learning to ultra fast dynamics and, and instabilities. Um, so as you might know, uh, the, the study of ultrafast dynamics and instabilities, which uh, occurs or which arise from the propagation of intense and short pulses um, in optical fibers or, or waveguides, um, has been actually quite an active field of research for a long time. Um, ultrafast dynamics are, are particularly sensitive to the input condition uh, and system parameters such that uh, even a tiny change uh, in any of the system parameters can, can typically lead to traumatic variation in, in, in what you will observe. Uh, and and uh, uh, this type of uh, input sensitive dynamics are typically observed uh, both in driven system with feedbacks, uh, with feedback, which include, for instance, lasers or micro isolators, uh, but it also include um, uh, simpler single pass propagation uh, into nonlinear fibers and waveguides, so a system without feedback. Uh, but independently of the system in which they occur, these dynamics can be quite difficult to understand and control uh, because they involved or they can involve a wide range of, of parameters. So, so for better understanding and, and harnessing of, of uh, propagation dynamics, typically uh, one need to resort to both advanced numerical modeling as well as to measurement techniques which are capable of resolving intensity and spectral profile uh, with high resolution uh, on the order of, of uh, sub femtosecond and, and sub nanometer uh, scale. Um, <coughs> modeling can be uh, sometimes Although it's, it's extremely useful, it can be computationally intensive, both in terms of time and memory, uh, and the real-time measurement techniques, which are typically used to, to characterize uh, uh, ultra-fast dynamics, can also be quite complex, and they have their own uh, limitations in terms of resolution, bandwidth, operating wavelengths, uh, and so forth. So it may be extremely useful uh, to develop new tools, which allows us to perform uh, uh, other characterization or optimization or both uh, type of tasks on the fly. And this is where machine learning techniques come in and, and, and can be efficiently exploited and applied uh, uh, to nonlinear systems. So in, 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 uh, uh, in the uh, remaining of the talk, I will focus uh, on the uh, single pass propagation systems where, where uh, uh, short pulses 
are injected into optical fibers of waveguides. So, so this is a type of uh, thing we are going to, to look at from now on. So uh, um, for, for those who are not really familiar with, with uh, ultra-fast propagation dynamics, uh, I wanted to give you a, a, a very short or very brief summary uh, on what kind of dynamics we are talking about. And I wanted in particular to emphasize the fact that the dynamics depends on the, the uh, or can or dramatically depends on the sign of the dispersion of your fiber or waveguide. And, and dispersion representing, of course, the, the wavelength dependence um, of the refractive index. So whether uh, you operate in the normal dispersion regime or in the anomalous dispersion regime, um, the dynamics can be quite different. So in normal dispersion regime, typically you would observe uh, 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 the cell phase modulation or, or cascaded uh, Raman scattering, while in the anomalous dispersion regime, uh, you have a, a soliton dynamics uh, and related instabilities, uh, so such as uh, high order soliton compression, dispersive wave generation, soliton cell frequency shift or, or modulation instability and so forth. Uh, Another uh, uh, important uh, uh, fact to highlight is the fact that uh, in the animal dispersion regime, it's really easy regime where uh, localized structures uh, forms uh, and interact. And, and, and as we will see, uh, uh, machine learning is, is uh, uh, or can be uh, exploited efficiently to extract information about uh, 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 emerging localized structures in this regime. Um, and in this talk, I will focus on, on the animal dispersion regime uh, 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 because this is a, a, a regime which, which has been uh, attracting a lot of interest from an experimental perspective uh, because it's associated with, with dynamics that can be exploited for uh, uh, particular uh, applications. Uh, not only is the, the ultra-fast dynamics in optical fibers depend on the sign of the dispersion, but they actually also depend on the input pulse duration. So the duration of the pulse that you inject into your fiber or waveguide. And depending on the pulse duration, the dynamics can be deterministic. That is, there is no element of randomness into your system. Each time you inject a pulse, and if the pulse uh, keep its or, or as identical uh, input uh, parameters, then the results of the dynamics will lead to an identical uh, spectrum or temporal profile at the fiber output. So in other words, these dynamics are coherent and they are observed uh, exclusively for pulses which are said to be short. And by short here, I mean typically some couple of hundred femtoseconds or shorter. Now, if you increase the pulse duration uh, and inject that into your fiber or waveguide, then um, the, the dynamics will start becoming increasingly stochastic, which means that they include some element of randomness. So every time you perform the experiment with the same initial condition, you will most likely get the different output result. And this is what we call the incoherent regime. And it's typically observed for pulses which are longer than a few hundred of, uh, of femtoseconds. More, longer than a few hundred of femtoseconds. Um, and this, this uh, element of randomness, which, uh, which uh, uh, becomes visible uh, for longer pulses, actually uh, originates from the input noise. So as you might know, uh, 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 short pulses, which are produced by by lasers uh, always contain some tiny, tiny amount of noise uh, uh, on top of their temporal uh, envelope. Uh, typically, you do not see uh, this noise when you measure uh, the short pulses or when you characterize the short pulses with, with standard measurement techniques, but it is inherently present. And this is, of course, related to the fact that the light is being generated uh, uh, in the amplifying material itself. So. Uh, due to, to uh, uh, spontaneous uh, emission in particular. So it means that every pulse coming out of your laser always contain a tiny amount of, uh, 
uh, fluctuation on their uh, superimposed on their intensity profile. Uh, uh, but although not, not, not always resolvable, it is nevertheless there. And these very tiny fluctuations, which are different from pulse to pulse, will be extremely amplified uh, uh, when they experience nonlinear propagation dynamics in an optical fibers or waveguide. Uh, in the case, the, the duration of these pulses are long. And the reason is because in that case, the dynamics are not seeded uh, by spectral components of the pulse itself, by, but by the noise uh, uh, which is present at other frequencies. So what type of, of uh, uh, ultrafast dynamics am I gonna talk about uh, later on? Uh, in, in terms of coherent ultrafast dynamics, uh, 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 the area where I want to show you that uh, machine learning can be useful is, is the compression uh, experienced by, by uh, uh, solitons uh, of high order when they are injected into, into an optical fiber. And I will show you that this can be uh, nicely predicted uh, uh, by using a peculiar type of neural network, um, as well as uh, even more complex propagation dynamics, uh, 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 which we are commonly referring to, uh, to have uh, coherent supercontinuum generation, uh, where all the dynamics in the anonymous expression regime kicks in together to lead uh, to massive uh, spectral broadening um, and the generation of new frequencies. And again, I will show you how a peculiar type of, of neural network can be used to accurately uh, uh, predict the development of a supercontinuum in an optical fiber. Uh, the other type of dynamics where machine learning can be essentially used is, is uh, uh, dynamics which are seeded by noise, so the so-called stochastic dynamics. And in that case, uh, we will particularly look at that modulation instability, which is a fundamental instability present in many physical systems, not only in optical fibers, but also, for example, um, in uh, uh, ocean waves or Bose-Einstein condensates, plasma waves, and so forth. Uh, and uh, uh, supercontinuum generation in the noisy regime. So when you generate the supercontinuum uh, uh, with, with uh, long, long pulses, uh, where the dynamics are, are, are triggered by noise rather than currently seeded by the uh, spectral component of the pulse itself. Um, of course, uh, uh, li like I mentioned already before, both advanced numerical modeling and, and measurement techniques have been very crucial to understand uh, complex nonlinear ultrafast dynamics. Uh, um, and and uh, in, terms, uh, in terms of modeling, uh, the method that we are using uh, typically uh, uh, rely on the direct integration of differential equation, which represent the physics or the essential physics of the system studied. Uh, so typical, Encountered models include the pure nonlinear Schrodinger equation, or uh, which which is valid for uh, a narrow band field propagation, or its uh, generalized uh, extension, which include uh, high order perturbative uh, uh, terms when the bandwidth of the optical field uh, spans several tens or hundreds of, of nanometers. Uh, I, I put that for your general knowledge. In the case of although we don't really look at this particular type of systems in this talk. But uh, in the case of, of dissipative systems uh, or systems with, with uh, uh, feedback, uh, uh, a commonly employed model is a so-called Ginzburg-Landau equation, which also include uh, gain, gain and losses. As for the, the uh, measurement techniques, which are often used to characterize uh, nonlinear propagation and instabilities um, uh, in real time, one can mention uh, uh, the, the uh, dispersive Fourier transform uh, which allows you to measure single shot spectra uh, and the, the time lens technique, which allows you to access in real time, uh, ultra fast uh, temporal variation. Um, both of these techniques do not give you access to the phase, only to the intensity profile. And if you want to access also the phase of the field, uh, you can use other techniques such as uh, spectral interferometry. Uh, um, and I have put uh, here, uh, uh, some uh, uh, very nice uh, review papers on, on these measurement techniques. And, and, and again, if you're interested, I really encourage you to, to go in and have a look uh, uh, at those. Um, <coughs> oh, 
Okay. Um, a little bit more about 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 uh, this uh, measurement technique uh, because I'll refer to them a little bit later on. Uh, uh, so so in the time domain, uh, when you need to measure uh, uh, temporal profile uh, on an ultra fast time scale and in real time. So for example, when you have um, incoherent dynamics, so that if you remember each time you inject a different input, po or, uh, input pulse, the, the results at the output of your fiber is different. So it means that in order to characterize what happens, you really need to perform uh, measurements on the single shot basis. So if you want to do that in the temporal domain, uh, 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 the, the best approach is to use a so-called time lens, which is based on a space-time analogy. So in space, uh, if you want to magnify an object, what you do is that you will use a lens. And if you want to do that in the time domain, uh, you can construct the equivalent uh, by applying a quadratic chirp uh, uh, to the temporal waveform. Uh, uh, because if you, if, 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 if you know a little bit of, of uh, physical optics, what the lens does simply is that it imposes a quadratic, a quadratic spatial chirp uh, uh, onto, onto the object that you're imaging. And, and co that combined with diffraction allow you to achieve magnification. So the same can be uh, achieved in the time domain by uh, imposing some quadratic chirp. Uh, typically, this is typically done uh, with some nonlinear Nonlinear um, effect, such as for wave mixing, for example, or some frequency generation, and that combined uh, with dispersion, which is the analog of diffraction uh, in time, uh, can allow you to magnify a, a temporal waveform. And typical uh, magnification factor, which are doable uh, in, in experimentally, are around about times one hundred. But this is already extremely useful. Uh, uh, and, and allow you to, to, to probe a phenomena on, on, on a 100 femtosecond time scale or, or, or around that. Uh, as for uh, real time spectral measurements, so when you want to measure the spectrum associated with a given waveform from shot to shot, uh, there's a very simple technique which has be become extremely popular over the past 10 years. Uh, and which is uh, called the dispersive Fourier transform. It is again based on a space-time analogy. So in space, as, as you know, uh, uh, if you look in the far field, uh, uh, basically the, 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 the image in the far field is simply the Fourier transform of, uh, of, of, uh, of the aperture uh, through which, uh, uh, for example, a, a light beam goes. So if I have a... a, a an, a disk, then I will see an area function in the far field, which is a Fourier transform. So you can you can apply the same kind of principle to obtain single shot spectral measurements. Uh, and the only thing that you need to do is to replace uh, diffractions by dispersion. That means uh, 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 injecting the the uh, single shot spectra that you want to measure, or the waveform corresponding to the single shot spectra that you want to measure, into a highly dispersive fiber. And what you will measure at the output of the dispersive fiber is the Fourier transform of of what you injected in. Uh, that means uh, uh, the spectra. Uh, so of course, this technique sounds extremely nice, and they are indeed extremely powerful, and they really have a load, or they really have uh, uh, revolutionize uh, um, the way people uh, can study ultra-fast uh, dynamics. However, it is also good to bear in mind their limitation. Uh, in particular, uh, time lengths are extremely complex system. Uh, they are limited in terms of bandwidth, generally in terms of the magnification factor as well. Resolution, also you cannot implement the technique at any wavelength range. So, so there are truly some limitations. As for the dispersive wave transform, it's extremely simple, it's powerful, but again, there is maybe some wavelength range where it's difficult to implement, for example, in the mid infrared. Uh, and also, it's really important to bear in mind that none of these techniques give you access um, to the phase. So they only provide information about the intensity, which means, for example, that if you use a dispersive wave transform to perform single shot spectral measurement, you will only recover the single shot spectra and you will get no information whatsoever about the temporal waveform. So this can be a, a limitation in, in, in many cases. Okay, so uh, 
that being said, let's move on now to uh, uh, concrete application of machine learning. And, and let me try to, 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 to show you how it can be efficiently used to dig out some information. So the first type of, uh, of dynamics uh, uh, that we, we, we are going to look at is uh, so-called modulation instability. And, and uh, uh, to refresh your memory, uh, modulation instability refers uh, to, to the amplification of a very weak modulation, uh, such as this, on top of a continuous plane wave. Okay. And that leads with propagation uh, to uh, nonlinear localization and the emergence of breather uh, structures. Uh, and when, when, when you see this coherently, that is, if you impose a modulation already at the input of the fiber, this modulation stability phenomenon can be exploited for pulse compression, for example, or, or frequency comb generation, as the development of localized structures is associated in the uh, frequency domain, uh, we see a generation of multiple sidebands uh, through uh, four-wave mixing. Uh, the instability can also be seeded by noise, so, so not incoherently in that case. Uh, so if you inject only typically the plane wave or, or, or pulses, which has a very long duration, uh, uh, modulation instability will typically develop from the noise, which is always present. Uh, and that will uh, also lead to the breakup uh, of your uh, input pulse or a continuous wave uh, plane wave into a random train of uh, ultra short structures, uh, uh, which can also be um, um, seen as, as the same type of breather structures that emerged in, in the coherent case. Uh, and in the particular regime where modulation instability is seeded by noise, so this leads uh, obviously to chaos with, with random, random pulses or substructures which emerge. Uh, and it has also been shown to, to a regime, or this regime has also be shown to be associated with uh, uh, extreme event or rogue wave statistics uh, 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 arising from, from a specific structure with an extremely, which are rare, but which has an extremely intense uh, uh, temporal intensity. So modulation stability has been, or these dynamics have been characterized in real time, both in the spectral domain using the, the, the dispersive Fourier transform uh, method, uh, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, and it has also been characterized in the time domain uh, using the uh, time lens technique, uh, 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 which, I, which I discussed uh, also uh, earlier. Uh, but of course, because uh, 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 the dispersive Fourier transform um, is much simpler than the time lens technique, wouldn't it be nice if we could actually infer properties from the time domain simply from the dispersive Fourier transform uh, single shot spectral measurements? Uh, so that sounds like, like, like nice, but because we don't have access to the phase, how to do that, that's one problem. And, and the other problem is that if you look at the spectrum, which is associated with, with the noise seeded modulation instability, typically it will look like this. So it's on a log scale, it's triangular and it's highly structured so that to the naked eye, it's really hard to see how uh, some specific pattern of features, which would be uh, hidden in this noisy spectrum uh, could be related to some peculiar uh, uh, characteristics in the temporal waveform where localized structures uh, emerge. Uh, and this is where machine learning can come in and allows nevertheless to extract information. So the problem that uh, we, 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 we sort of uh, assigned to ourselves was to see whether we could configure a neural network that could map shot to shot spectra to the peak intensity uh, uh, or to the maximum peak intensity in the time domain. So in other words, if we feed a multiple single shot spectra to the network, can we train it so that it can say later on that the particular spectrum is associated with a particular uh, uh, maximum intensity in the temporal domain. So that allows basically to detect uh, extreme events simply from single shot spectra, which, which is not possible uh, uh, using sim simple uh, uh, measurements or spectral domain measurements. 
So the way we did this was to use a, a standard a feed forward neural network architecture. Uh, the network, uh, uh, so the, the detail about the network's parameters are, are given here and, and I'm not I'm not going uh, basically into, into, into the detail because you can, you can find uh, uh, all the, the detail about the networks in the, in, in, in the paper uh, where these results uh, have been published. But uh, I'll be happy to, to, to answer questions if you, if, if you want to know more. Uh, so so the, the way we do this, which is I think the, the most important thing here is that we have generated a, a large ensemble of a single shot spectra uh, uh, corresponding to modulation stability dynamics uh, using the nonlinear Schrodinger equation. And then the single shot spectra uh, are uh, discretized into spectral beams, uh, which are uh, our input here. Uh, and they are passed um, uh, to, to the uh, neural network. Uh, and the output of the network is a corresponding maximum time domain intensity associated with the particular spectrum we feed to the network, okay? And we fed something like a 30,000 30, simulations to train the network. Uh, and once the network has been trained, uh, then we tested it, obviously. Um, um, and we tested it with uh, 20,000 uh, simulated spectra, which were not seen, of course, in the training, in the training stage to avoid any, any bias. And then uh, for each, uh, spectrum that we now feed, we ask the network uh, to predict the peak intensity in the time domain, okay? And then we compare this predicted intensity by the network with the known ground truth uh, intensity from the corresponding uh, time domain simulations. And you can see that we obtained a correlation which is extremely high above 0.9, meaning that the network is in fact able to predict correctly uh, the maximum intensity in a time domain associated with a particular single shot spectrum. Once you've done that, you can go to the lab and you can actually apply it to some uh, real time experiments. Uh, so this is what we did. We constructed uh, a, a real-time spectrometer capable of measuring single shot spectra with high dynamic range. So we didn't really use a dispersive wave transform in that case. And the reason was because typical dynamic range of, of a dispersive wave transform is about 20 to 30 dB. And it's, it's limited by the ADC converter of, of, of the oscilloscope. So rather what we did here is construct a, um, a, a real-time spectrometer, uh, which would allow us to get a dynamic range over 50, 50 dB. That is, it means that we can measure single shot spectra uh, 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 with a dynamic range in excess of uh, uh, five orders of magnitude between the mean and the maximum. And that's really key because uh, 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 the neural network really need this dynamic range to be able to predict accurately uh, uh, the maximum time domain intensity from a single shot spectrum. So you really need to feed this, this, uh, this, the wings uh, of the spectrum, in other words. And, and so therefore we needed to be able to perform measurements uh, as well uh, with a high dynamic range. Uh, so, so we went to the lab, measured the real time spectra with a high dynamic range uh, of modulation instability generating in an optical fiber. Uh, and then from this uh, measured real time spectra, uh, which were acquired, we fed them to the neural network model, uh, which was trained from numerical simulations. And then we asked the neural network to determine the, the, the temporal peaks uh, in the time domain. Uh, and from that, we were able to compute the associated uh, probability density function. Uh, and then we have compared uh, this, uh, this uh, probability density function um, predicted by the machine learning with, with fully realistic simulations of our experimental setup uh, using the uh, non reassuring equation. And you can see that there is, there is an uh, 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 amazing agreement between the two. So, so showing the ability of the neural network to, to, to uh, make prediction based on, on, on experimental, experimentally recorded single shot spectra. Um, we have also then tried to apply uh, another type of machine learning tool 
in the form of uh, unsupervised learning to analyze uh, uh, single shot modulation instability spectra. So in that case, we do not use a neural network, but it's unsupervised learning. So, so, so what we do is essentially a cluster, cluster analysis uh, using the k-means method. And, and uh, here we use, I think, uh, uh, nine, nine different clusters. So we feed basically uh, uh, a huge amount of single shot modulation instability spectra. And then we ask the, the k-means algorithm to classify the spectra according to, to some clusters. Uh, and what's actually very interesting, or what we found was extremely interesting, is that uh, uh, when you inspect the different clusters, we found that some of the clusters, uh, uh, which were identified by the k-means algorithm, uh, were corresponding uh, um, in the time domain um, to intensity profiles, uh, uh, which uh, our specific analytical solution of the nonlinear Schrenger equation. So to give you concrete examples, if we consider the spectral cluster identified by the k-means algorithm with the largest population, uh, the temporal peaks uh, in the time domain corresponding to this cluster were found to correspond to the so-called Akhmedyev breather, uh, which is the modulation instability structure with the largest gain. So that kind of makes sense. Uh, on the other end, if we consider the spectral cluster with the largest mean bandwidth identified by the k-means algorithm, we found that the temporal peaks in that case corresponded to the strongly localized peregrine soliton solution of the linear Schrodinger equation. So it's kind of interesting that uh, uh, without any knowledge of the physics whatsoever, uh, the, the, the uh, unsupervised learning in this case is still able to sort of identify very noisy spectra with uh, a uh, particular identical solution of the nonlinear Schrodinger equation. Uh, we then also look at uh, a different type of uh, instability, which is um, the emergence of uh, uh, so-called rogue solitons or solitons with extreme cell frequency shift in noisy supercontinuum generation. And 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 uh, uh, so just to to. Uh, brief you a little bit on, 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 on what are these uh, uh, solitons. Uh, basically, uh, when a supernum is generated in the uh, long pulse regime and the dynamics are seeded from noise, um, what you will see is that the, the supernum spectrum actually varies significantly from shot to shot, similar to modulation instability case, which I, I showed before. Um, and in some very rare cases, the spectrum extends actually much longer towards a longer wavelengths. Uh, and this is due to the presence of the soliton with an extreme uh, wavelength shift uh, in the spectrum. So in other words, uh, most of the time, what will happen is that the, the uh, dynamics will be typically something like this. So I'm not getting into the detail, but in very rare cases, uh, there will be a, a soliton which, which uh, has a wavelength uh, which um, is located much further uh, in terms of uh, spectral bandwidth as compared to the typical cases. So the, these solitons, which typically arise of uh, multiple collisions in the initial stage of the supergenome generation process, uh, uh, um, are, are typically or are. Uh, nowadays termed rock solitons because uh, they are rare and, uh, and, and uh, uh, they are much more powerful uh, uh, as uh, um, compared to, to the typical uh, soliton that you would observe in most of the cases. Uh, this type of rock solitons have been, of course, uh, as well characterized experimentally, and this uh, typically is done in the spectral domain, again, using the real-time dispersive Fourier transform, so you can actually measure these single shot spectra fluctuations and see that in some cases the spectrum goes or extends to much longer wavelengths. However, that still doesn't give you any uh, insight into the characteristics in the time domain of the underlying uh, most red shifted solitons or rock solitons. So what we did is to extend the work we had done for the modulation instability case uh, and see if we could now train the neural network to determine 
the temporal properties of the most stretch shifted solitons in noisy supergonium generation from single shot spectral measurements, so without any phase information again. And, and, and uh, uh, here we, we kind of uh, uh, looked at all the possible characteristics uh, that we could obtain from, from the soliton that is not only the, the uh, peak power, but also its uh, temporal duration, as well as this, its uh, uh, walk off with respect to the uh, input uh, pump wave, uh, pumps, uh, pump pulse. So, so uh, the idea is to basically uh, measure a lot of uh, different single shot supergonium spectra, uh, fit that to the network and then have the network to be able to predict the peak power duration and walk off from the pump of the most redshifted soliton, okay? So again, we use a similar architecture as in the uh, uh, modulation instability uh, application. And uh, except that the idea here is to correlate the full superconium spectrum, which is fed to the network with the characteristics of the most redshifted soliton peak power walk off and the temporal duration. So in this case, we train the network over uh, 20,000 different numerical simulations. Uh, it's actually a very similar architecture as, as uh, the modulation stability case, so feed forward and, and the same number of hidden layers. Uh, and then we uh, tested uh, the performance of the model on some unseen uh, simulated supernum spectra, 10,000 in that case. Uh, and then for each of these 10,000 unseen simulation, uh, or in, uh, unseen spectra, we asked uh, the network model when it has been trained, once it had been trained, to predict the peak power of the most redshifted soliton in the time domain, uh, its duration and uh, temporal walk off. And as you can see, uh, when we compare um, the predicted value by the network with the actual uh, ground truth uh, known from the corresponding time domain simulations, we find an extremely high correlation above 0.9, showing that the network is, is able to predict, uh, in that case, a peak power of the most redshifted soliton in a noisy SC, SC spectrum, simply from the, the spectral data without any phase information. And the results are <coughs> equally good um, for predicting the duration of the most redshifted soliton, uh, as well as a, a temporal walk of uh, uh, with respect to the uh, initial pump pulse. And what is quite remarkable is that, um, and, and which I didn't mention earlier, but in the type of uh, supernova spectra that we have trained the network over, we include uh, uh, large variations in the input condition, that is the input uh, uh, pulse parameter that seeds the supernova generation process so that uh, in the terms of spectra which are fed to the network, uh, we have various cases which span from nearly pure modulation stability case to octa spanning supercontinuum. And independently uh, uh, of the uh, scenario, the network is still able uh, uh, to perform extremely well in terms of prediction. So this is quite uh, remarkable. Uh, of course, you, 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 might, you might ask that, that uh, uh, maybe there would be other ways to predict uh, the, the most redshifted soliton properties from simpler metric, for example, associated without using a neural network. So for example, just using the supergonal spectral bandwidth or the spectral energy in, in, in a, a narrow wavelength region uh, on the long wavelength side. But however, as you can see here, uh, uh, if you do that, uh, uh, this fails and, 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 and none of these simpler metrics are able to give you accurate prediction of the characteristics of, of the most redshifted soliton in noisy supercritical generations. Uh, uh, not, not, not even near to the level that the uh, neural network can do. So you can, you can clearly see the, the benefit of, of using uh, machine learning in, 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 uh, to, to analyze uh, this kind of noisy instabilities. Um, so, so far, I, I hope I have uh, convinced you how neural networks can be efficiently exploited to extract particular characteristics from partial measurements. Uh, so, 
from only, for example, a spectral intensity measurements, you can deduce using a neural network uh, uh, information from the time domain. Uh, and, and, and then we decided to go one step further, which was to look at whether we would be able to teach a neural network to learn the full complex uh, evolution dynamics uh, from short pulses and optical fiber or a waveguide. In all what I've shown so far, we only look at what comes out of the waveguide and fiber, and then we, we try to, to, to basically obtain additional information uh, using the neural network. But now we, were, we really wanted to see whether, whether the, the network would be able to essentially substitute to the numerical simulation of the nonlinear Schrodinger equation or the generalized nonlinear Schrodinger equation, uh, that so-called model-free prediction. Uh, and 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 uh, I also recommend uh, uh, the talk by by Nathan Kutz on on, on that aspect and all his work, uh, which 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 is extremely in, in interesting. So the, the way we did that uh, this time was to use a little bit more complex neural network architecture, not the simple feed forward network, but uh, something which we call the recurrent neural network. Um, and the recurrent neural network is a particular class of networks which. Um, uh, which uses um, sequential data or, 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 or uh, uh, time series. Um, and this allows to the, this type of network essentially to capture temporal dynamic uh, behavior. So, so the, way, the way this works more concretely is that uh, you feed the recurrent neural networks with an, uh, at the input with a time series uh, and the network will provide at, at its output, not a single parameter, but also a time series. Uh, and the, the network has a built-in uh, loop to allow information to persist. So, so that is that some of the, of the parameters are, are shared across its layer of the network, which allows to have this uh, kind of memory effect. And they are particularly useful uh, to model data sequence, for example, in speech and text recognition, predictive text or, or, or stock market prediction and so forth. So these are actually uh, used in many other applications than, than, than in physics and in particular um, photonics. So the particular uh, form, sorry, uh, the particular form of recurrent neural network that, that uh, we have been using is a so-called long and short-term memory cell architecture. And uh, uh, what we did is essentially to train the network uh, with this kind of ar architecture to be able to forecast the evolution of temporal and spectral intensity during nonlinear pulse propagation. Um, and this was done by generating a large amount of evolution maps, which were obtained from integration of the uh, generalized nonlinear Schrodinger equation. And then this evolution map were then used to train the recurrent neural network and then make predictions uh, from a, 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 for different set of input parameters and, and fiber parameters. So this is how, how it works uh, more concretely. So uh, for each evolution map in the uh, data ensemble, um, consecutive or temporal uh, spectral intensity profile are fed to the recurrent neural network uh, in an incremental step of distance delta Z uh, and here in this work, we, we've basically fed 10 consecutive profiles. So that is from distance Z minus 10 delta Z to distance Z minus delta Z. And this intensity profile are then passed to the uh, long short term memory um, layer, which consists of cells which are governed by a, a specific algorithm. And the uh, long short term memory layer uses three different types of information to predict the spectral or temporal intensity profile at the, dist the next distance, that is the distance set. Uh, so it uses basically the intensity profile as, as a, a step before Z minus delta Z, the predicted intensity profile at, this, at uh, two steps before uh, Z minus two delta Z, and then also the long-term uh, dependency information which is, which is stored uh, in, the, in the cell memory. Uh, that is uh, the evolution from Z minus 10 delta Z to Z minus three delta Z. So with this three type of information, then the, 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 the um, uh, network is able to make a prediction of what's coming next uh, in terms of uh, uh, intensity profile. 
Um, and uh, uh, the output of the uh, uh, long short term memory layer is, is uh, also fed to a feed forward network uh, to improve uh, with three and layers uh, to further improve the, the predicted intensity at distance set. Uh, and then we compare uh, the prediction made by the direct run neural network uh, at distance z with the actual ground truth uh, from the uh, 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 Generalized neural Schenger equation simulations, and the, that give us an error, which is then back propagated to the weight biases of the of the, of the network uh, nodes, uh, both in the uh, hidden layer uh, and in, in the uh, uh, long short term memory layer, um, and and that allows us to to adjust basically uh, uh, these uh, hyperparameters to minimize the prediction error, and then the a recurrent neural network cycle is then initiated again with an updated input, which consists from the uh, consecutive temporal or spectral intensity profile from the distance Z minus nine Delta Z to Z. And then we ask, or we teach a network how to predict the intensity or spectral profile at distance, oops, uh, at distance uh, Z plus Delta Z this time. Um, of course, um, it's important to make sure that the, 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 the network is able to make prediction for a wide range of uh, propagation scenario, input pulse parameters, uh, and, and, and fiber parameters. So for this purpose, we have trained the network uh, based on the, generalized, on the normalized form of the nonlinear Schrodinger equation or generalized nonlinear Schrodinger equation. So you can normalize these equations so that uh, then uh, 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 when you have a given system, uh, you can um, uh, put the, the, the uh, systems in terms of uh, uh, dimensionless unit, and that will be uh, allow the network to make a prediction uh, uh, in that way. So uh, uh, in short, um, the network by using uh, dimensionless uh, training data, is then able to make a generalized prediction for a wide range of, of uh, propagation scenario and system parameters. Uh, and also something which I really want to mention is that we only feed intensity profiles to networks. So we do not feed any information about the phase evolution uh, in the, in the uh, dynamics at all. It only, it, it only learn how to make prediction from the uh, intensity profile at the input. And you can train the, the network either in the uh, time or spectral domain and it works equally well. So just to show you some concrete results uh, to uh, soliton compression prediction, for example, uh, here you can see uh, to the uh, uh, graph on the left, the uh, actual uh, integration of the neural Schrodinger equation and then the, the prediction made by the recurrent neural network when it, once it has been trained. Uh, so, of course, this prediction is made for some parameters which were not seen during the training phase. And you can see that, that the, the, the agreement is, is uh, amazingly good. Uh, uh, we also did some uh, comparison with experiments. So, so uh, some data which were obtained in the lab uh, for this kind of uh, um, um, input pulse and the fiber parameters where we observed higher order soliton compression. Then we cut the fibers at selective distances. And then uh, we compare the results uh, with uh, 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 the network prediction, uh, what we should observe. And uh, the, 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 the uh, comparison with experiments is, is excellent, showing the ability of, of the network to, pre to predict accurately this kind of uh, uh, nonlinear compression dynamics. Um, we also tested the ability of the network to make accurate prediction in the presence of noise. Uh, so if you add noise to the input, input, uh, input intensity profile, is the network able to make still accurate prediction? And the reason is because in an experimental situation, typically there is always some kind of noise or uncertainty on the input parameters. So it's important to see if the, the network can accommodate for that. And indeed the predictions are still relatively good. So the network is able to, to uh, accommodate uh, for noise at the input. You can also include additional uh, input pulse characteristic uh, which can affect the dynamics. So for example, if your input pulse is chirped, uh, you can also train the network to, to include that uh, by adding it as an additional input parameter uh, beyond the, the, the uh, evolution map that you feed. 
Uh, and you can see here, this is an example where, where uh, uh, we ask the network to predict the evolution of a chub pulse. Uh, and, and when we compare to the predicted evolution using the Nash-Ringer equation, you can see that there is, uh, again, excellent agreement between, between the two. Um, it can even learn much more complex dynamics. So the development of a full uh, super continuum, uh, you can see here some, some examples uh, 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 of a different, different type of super spectra which are generated. Uh, so the graph again on the, on the left represent the numerical integration of the generalized non schringer equation and the uh, graph to the right represent the predictions made by the recurrent neural network for given uh, input pulse parameters and fiber uh, dispersion uh, and nonlinear parameters. Uh, and, and again, in this case, although the dynamics are very complex with the generation of a dispersive wave, uh, 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 Raman shifting solitons and their uh, interactions, uh, the network is still able to, to understand all this, learn all this and make a, a very accurate prediction. Uh, finally, we, we cranked up a little bit the game a bit more and tried to see if we could train the current neural network. Uh, to include uh, uh, um, or to reproduce multidimensional system, uh, which is a case when you have nonlinear dynamics in multi-mode fibers. Uh, uh, so for that, uh, we trained the recurrent neural network for from a multi-mode uh, generalized nonlinear Schrodinger equation simulation. So feeding different evolution map corresponding to different excitation of modes at the input, and then we asked the network to predict. Uh, uh, the evolution associated with a uh, given relative distribution of, of uh, coupling uh, at the fiber input. And again, uh, 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 we, we, we were able to demonstrate that the recurrent neural network uh, uh, can uh, make predictions uh, uh, very accurately, even for this uh, more complex case. Uh, and 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 the, the last thing uh, which I want to 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 emphasize and which is something which is perhaps not obvious, uh, indeed you may wonder why should I use a recurrent neural network uh, while I can make simulations using the generalized nonlinear Schrodinger equation. Well, the the uh, the reason is actually quite simple and twofold. Uh, the first is that uh, uh, when you train a recurrent neural network. Uh, the only thing that then you need to store to be able to make uh, full evolution maps prediction are the parameters of the networks. That is the nodes, weight, and biases. And this um, actually uh, only use a tiny amount of memory as compared to the uh, large number. Uh, uh, and, and with that, you can basically ask the network to predict any uh, a large number of different uh, evolution maps. Uh, but if you want to do the same with a general Schrodinger equation, then you will need to run your simulation multiple times and you need to store that. And that takes a huge amount of memory. Uh, the other advantage of the recurrent neural network representation is the fact that uh, it it's also saves you a lot of uh, uh, computation time. Once it is trained, the predictions are instantaneous. And to give you an idea, um, if you do a, a numerical simulation of the generalized nonlinear Schrodinger equation with, let's say, 200 and power 13 grid points. Uh, this will take you for making 1,000 to compute 1,000 different evolution maps about three hours. Uh, once the network has been trained, uh, the network can do the same in 36 seconds. So that gives you an idea. And, and the uh, larger the number of points that you need in your, in your grid, uh, uh, the larger the discrepancy is, in fact. And for the, the multi-mode case, which I showed in the previous slide, the, the discrepancy in terms of computation time is even uh, uh, larger. Uh, for the uh, two to the power of 13 grid points and the thousand evolution, it takes 95 hours for the integration of the generalized neural Schrodinger equation, while for the uh, recurrent neural network prediction, it takes uh, still about uh, uh, less than 40 seconds. And as I highlighted earlier, uh, the other benefit is, is uh, the uh, saving in terms of memory, uh, uh, which is uh, 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 some, some orders of magnitude in favor of the neural network. So uh, I think I've spoken enough and uh, that uh, I'll leave you to read the conclusion, but I think my take home message is that uh, 
one can expect machine learning to become a, a standard tool in ultra fast uh, uh, optics in the in the coming years. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Gori, for the beautiful talk as usual, very clear and uh, very beautiful results. I have a quick question um, that you can ask in a couple of minutes yeah. because we are a bit over time and- uh, Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Stefano told me to be very strict. So when you increase or decrease the data sets to train the neural network, will you see any yeah. variation in ROG soliton characteristics like peak power or pulse duration? And the question is by Su Surajit Bose. So, so, so I, I guess if I understand the question is that uh, um, uh, how much training is required in terms of data volume to make accurate prediction? Correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, uh, so from what we have seen, uh, some, some, uh, typically some few thousand simulations is enough. And, and, and what, it, but, but of course, I mean, this, the, the, the way to understand this is that when you train a network, it's really important that it is trained to see at least approximately all the different case and scenarios that you will ask it to make predictions for later. If you show cases which are completely outside the, or if you, if you asked prediction for cases would be completely, completely outside the range of dynamics that you have shown the, the network during the training phase, it will have difficulty to, to make predictions. So, so if you train typically the network over some few thousand simulation, that's typically enough to represent all the different characteristics that the rogue solitons could have in a, in, in a, in a concrete situation. And then, the network is able to do that well. But if you only show, let's say, some hundred simulation, that will not be enough to cover all the possibilities typically, and then it, 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 might, it might not perform so well. Okay, thank you very much again, Gori. So I'm sure the people maybe will find the, um, the presentation also registered for later, recorded for later. So I'm going to present the next speaker that according to the program I printed is uh, uh, Darko Zibar from DTU Denmark. And uh, the, the talk uh, is going to be titled Advanced Classical and Quantum Photonic System Design Using Machine Learning. And this is the second part of the talk.